All right, guys, let's check out this Squale 1521. This is kind of a special edition. There's a couple different colorways, but we're going to talk about this one because this is the one I have. I think there's like a green one as well. But uh, first off, big thanks to Dino for sending this over. He sent over three awesome watches. Uh, this one, the 1545 in the background you see, and then uh, a Seiko. And I'll, I'll be doing videos on all of them here real soon. This one's first up. So this is my first look at a 1521 that... I mean, most of the 1521s I've looked at already have the full polished case. This one is no exception. It still has the full polished case, but it's absent of the Squally branding on the side of the case. Some people are going to like that. I personally, I'm, I'm fine either way. This one looks good without it, and the other one, you know, the other models look fine with it. So I'm, I'm fine either way. This one's a bit of a special edition. Obviously, you can see right away you have a metal bezel insert, and you have applied polished indices so you have a much dressier looking squale 1521 and this one is called the onda and then i believe there's actually another name attached to it that kind of ties in with the dial and it's a uh, mizanate which uh is it's all italian right so um mizanate means uh midnight blue sky and onda is the uh wave it means wave so before we get into the size of the watch let me point out why that name exists. Look at that dial. Is that not one of the best wave dials you've looked at? I think that is an excellent wave dial. I'm really digging that. And then the um, Midnight Blue Sky, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess maybe those are the colors that you would see in Italy, you know, in the around midnight in a blue sky. So maybe they nailed the color. I don't know. I've never bared witness to that. I think it has kind of a bluish, maybe a, a grayish, maybe even a hint of violet in there, depending on the light you catch it in. But uh, yeah, we're going to go with uh, Mezzanotte. So that describes the color, guys. So let's do that. Um, Size-wise, if I measure on the top here, because the bezel actually sits a little wide of the case, the bezel width is 41.8 millimeter. The case is only like 40.7 millimeter. So really good size. Basically, it's going to feel like a 40 to 40 and a half millimeter watch. That's what it's going to feel like. The lug to lug is a 48.4, but look how dramatic they turn down. I mean, that thing, you can set it down and the case back doesn't hit the ground. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't hit the desk. The, the lugs hold it up. Not a lot of watches can do that. This one kind of perches up. It's very comfortable on wrist. 13 millimeter thick, has a flat sapphire crystal with AR coating, and 20 millimeter lug width. Most of these ship on these excellent branded leather straps. Italian made, obviously. Uh, you can put it on a nice tropical strap. Uh, I have noticed there is even a Squale brand Melanese bracelet for these. So you can play around. Um, for some reason, and I know it's... Uh, you know, kind of frowned upon, I guess, in some circles, depending who you talk to, pairing a leather strap with a dive watch. This one is so dressy and so classy looking that it almost like has to be a leather strap. I don't know. That's just the way I see it. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, the, the sunken in really four o'clock offset crown is still, uh, you know, on the 1521. And then you have the screws holding the bezel down, 120 click bezel action on it. Just a superb bezel. So there are some 1521s with 60 click bezels. And there's even some colorways that you can find in a 60 or a 120. So depending on when it was made or something, I don't know. Uh, all of them should have the ETA 2824 three-handed with the date at the 3 o'clock. That should be a standard layout as well. Um, and you know, and I already zoomed in and we already looked at the dial but let's do that again because look at the bezel too the bezel insert the coin on the bezel even the crown the polishing on the case i mean this is just a very very dressy looking diver all around here's a look at the case back real quick this is a 50 atmos screw down crown 500 meter water resist let's pop it on wrist comes in that blue box you see off to the left i'm not going to open it up or anything like that it's pretty standard packaging nothing crazy but here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. And the 1521s always, always feel at home on my wrist. And I think they would on a lot of other people's wrists. 
you don't have any three o'clock crown that could potentially, I mean, I pretty much have built up a callus, so nothing bothers me there anyway, but um, it's just, it's not there. And the watch size is actually not huge anyway. So, um, you know, if you're used to like wearing like a Seiko SKX or something like that, or at just brought just about any Seiko diver, you know how you put it on and it just feels like super comfortable right away. Most of them are cushion cases. This one, this one is not a cushion case. It's basically kind of the same feel you get with the 1521. As soon as you put it on wrist, it's just instantly comfortable. Um, actually, I can show it next to uh, an SKX. I happen to have one sitting right here on the desk. You can see kind of, I mean, they almost present similar. I mean, th these ones are going to look a little different because you have the metal bezel, metal bezel insert versus you know, a black one here. So uh, that's going to be an optical illusion a little bit. But size-wise, they're pretty similar, honestly, you know, as far as like how they really look and feel on wrist. So loom on this guy is not going to be crazy good. I did kind of experiment with it before. You have the loom on these bars all the way around the perimeter. You have the hour, minute, seconds. And then there is the stripes on the 12 six and nine there's nothing over here at the date position the rest of these indices are just polished and faceted so even in low light they're gonna they're gonna sparkle they're gonna catch light like jewelry so still gonna be pretty legible not as legible as some of the actual regular colorways um you know the blue one obviously the black one i think the black dialed one with the polish case could potentially be one of my picks because you don't see a ton of people using that one and it still has the orange minute hand. So um, other than, you know, some of these, this one's really good looking. But maybe it's too much. I don't know. I do like my bling, but maybe it's too much. I don't know. You guys will have to let me know. Price-wise, Noman Watch, I'll put a link to them in the description. They still have these in stock because, like, uh, Long Island Watch doesn't have them anymore. I think the price is, like, eight fifty nine. dollars So I don't know if the other ones are, like, the same price. I didn't look. Uh, might be a slight premium on these. I'm not sure. Let me kill the lights so we can take a look at the loom. And yep, just like I said, you can kind of see it there. I think it shows up pretty good on camera. It's not a loom monster at all. But once your eyes adjust to it, you do have the pip, the hour, minute, second easily. And then the it's almost like a T, you know, uh, upside down T, the T and the sideways T over there is kind of how you see those indices. And then you barely see the, the rest of them where they're on the outside of the dial. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I mean, you can see that even in low light, look at how the light catches the indices. So you're still going to be able to read this thing, but it, the loom on it is not great. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next vid.